Hello and welcome to CVAT Academy, your go-to training hub for mastering data annotation with CVAT. In this video, we'll show how to annotate a video using track mode in a real project. Let's go. Let's open the instructions. According to the instructions, annotation is performed to create tracks for objects such as players, the ball, and the goalkeeper in the video. This is done using bounding boxes in track mode. Each object must be enclosed in a box that tightly surrounds it, allowing only a small gap of a few pixels. However, clipping the object with the box is prohibited. All visible parts of the object must be fully included in the box, even if they are partially hidden by other objects. When annotating, it is important that each object remains in one track throughout the video. Even if the object is completely hidden by other objects or goes out of frame, its track should not change when it reappears. This means that each object is assigned the same identifier throughout the video. Let's close the instructions and proceed with annotation. We activate the bounding box tool in track mode. The first object we will annotate is the goalkeeper. We create a box on the first frame for this person. We will apply the following annotation strategy here. We will go through the entire video and set keyframes at the most obvious points. We will switch one frame at a time. Here the person is jumping up and down and we find the points where the person loses speed during the jump and adjust the bounding box at those points to fix it and set a keyframe. Next, when the second player appears, they will occasionally overlap this person, so we will reduce the number of intermediate frames and adjust the bounding box more often where necessary. If within one, two, or at most three frames, we see that the bounding box starts clipping the person, we will correct the bounding box. At this point, the person is more overlapped, and some parts of them will appear on some frames, while others will be hidden. For this reason, we will need to adjust the bounding box on each frame. These moments are the most time-consuming for track annotation, as we can hardly use interpolation here, and this takes the most time. At this frame, the person's hand appears, and according to the instructions, we must also include it in the bounding box. In places where the person is covered similarly and moves without strong jerks, we can switch several frames ahead to adjust the bounding box and skip intermediate frames, so we don't need to spend time annotating them. Sometimes it is worth periodically going back a few frames to double-check the bounding box boundaries. We continue annotating in this manner until the person is fully hidden. At this frame, the person is completely covered and no further annotation is needed for them, but they will likely appear again in later frames. We will not set the outside property here. We continue switching frames to find the moment where the person reappears. Here the person has reappeared. Now we can adjust the bounding box to create a keyframe. Then we return to the previous keyframe where the last bounding box correction was made, switch one frame forward, and on this frame the person is hidden, so now we can enable the outside property. This way, we avoid using additional functions to hide the object in one place and then make it appear elsewhere. The outside property will remain active until we change the bounding box, which is where the person becomes visible again. Therefore, in the intermediate frames between hiding and reappearing, the bounding box will be excluded from annotation. Don't forget to pay attention to the left side where additional parts of the person might appear so that we don't miss them, as they must be included in the annotation. At this point, it is noticeable that the person is moving quite linearly, so in this case, we can continue annotating with a certain step, allowing us to speed up the annotation. Let's open the settings, press F2, and in the player step, let's set the value to 3. Now we can switch 3 frames forward by pressing the V key or using the double arrow in the player. This way, by pressing 1 key, we go forward by the set number of frames, then immediately adjust the bounding box, then switch a few more frames, and so on until the end of the video. The number of frames is chosen arbitrarily, usually by trial and error. 
It is also important to consider how many frames per second the video has. The higher the frames per second, the slower the video. This video has 25 frames per second, and for moments where the objects move smoothly and linearly, we can use a step of 2 to 4 frames, depending on how sharply the object changes trajectory. If the video had, for example, 50 frames per second, it would contain twice as many frames, so we could use a larger player step, such as 6 or 8 frames, depending on what's happening in the video. We adjusted the bounding box on the last frame, but the annotation is not finished yet. I would like to remind you that we only corrected the bounding box at the most obvious points, sometimes switching several frames ahead, sometimes just one frame, and sometimes using a three-frame step for annotation. Now let's go back to the beginning of the video, and we need to check the intermediate frames. In places where the bounding box will create large gaps or crop the person, we will need to fix it. In this case, we switch one frame ahead to ensure we don't miss any intermediate frames, otherwise an error may occur. While switching frames, we need to pay close attention to the extreme points of the person, which act as the boundaries for the bounding box. These points are usually the head, hands, and legs, and we focus on them first. If the bounding box is tight enough and doesn't crop the person at these points, we skip this frame and move on. However, if we encounter a moment where there are large gaps or cropping, we correct the bounding box and continue, and we keep doing this until we have checked the entire video. There may be moments where the bounding box moves smoothly behind the object, but at some point the object sharply changes speed and a gap appears on the next frame, in this case, above the head. Here we set a keyframe for the previous frame, where the bounding box covers the object well and then adjust its size on the next frame. We continue checking this bounding box until the end of the video and correct it on intermediate frames as necessary. We've finished the check and we'll do a final pass to exclude any missed frames and verify the result as a whole. Now everything looks good. Next, we move on to annotating the ball. The camera in this video isn't very static, so the bounding box may shift after a certain number of frames. However, since the camera movement is quite smooth, we can switch several frames ahead to adjust the bounding box. This means we switch frames until the shift of the bounding box becomes noticeable, and on that frame, we adjust it. Before the ball is kicked, it is covered by the foot. On this frame, we need to adjust the bounding box, but on the previous frame, it is placed correctly, so we need to set a keyframe here to prevent it from shifting when we adjust the bounding box on the next frame. After manually setting the keyframe, we move one frame ahead and adjust the bounding box. After that, the degree of overlap of the ball changes constantly on the following frames, so we will need to adjust the bounding box on every frame because interpolation won't work correctly here. Once the ball becomes fully visible again, we can switch several frames ahead and correct the bounding box there to set a keyframe. The ball moves in a non-linear way and changes speed, but this will allow us to use interpolation to adjust the size of the bounding box relative to the ball. And we will mainly just need to move the bounding box and slightly adjust its size if necessary. We continue annotating the ball in this way. Don't forget to use the hotkeys E and R to switch between neighboring keyframes to double check the annotation.
We've reached the end of the video, now let's double check how the ball was annotated throughout the video and correct any frames where the bounding box is shifted. No corrections were needed, so we move straight to annotating the last player. We start annotating from the moment their hand appears. After that, we will need to adjust every frame as the changes are quite significant, and interpolation will be inaccurate here. When most of the person's body is visible, we can try annotating every other frame, so let's change the player step to 2 and continue annotating every second frame. Just a reminder, to switch a set number of frames forward or backward, you need to press the C or V keys. At this point, the player starts moving slower and more smoothly, so we will increase the player step to 3 and continue annotating. When the person begins to move out of the frame, we adjust the bounding box on each frame. When the person has completely left the frame, we enable the outside property. We go back to the beginning of the task and double check the intermediate frames, correcting the bounding box where necessary. As always, we first focus on the person's limbs, as these are the most problematic areas. And it's where errors with bounding box boundaries often occur. Then, we do the final check of this track to ensure we haven't missed any errors. Now, let's just review the overall annotation result.
we have completed the annotation of this task. Annotating a video using track mode is a meticulous process. It's not only important to correct the bounding box, but also to maintain the sequence of actions to ensure the object tracks remain consistent and accurate throughout the video. We use keyframes to lock important changes, consider the peculiarities of object overlap and camera shifts. This approach helps create the most accurate annotation, excluding errors and minimizing unnecessary corrections. When finishing the annotation, it's always important to double check the result to ensure the quality of the annotation. Thank you for watching, and we hope that this process has become clear and helpful to you.